Hi everyone, it's Thrift Haul time, featuring Ugly Pyrex and this creepy baby. Well, hi everybody, this is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and it's time for another thrift haul. This week, I have quite a varied collection to show you, uh, and it came from all sorts of places. Goodwill, some local thrift shops here in the Philadelphia area, and a couple of flea markets from over the weekend. So, let's dive in and see what we've got. This time, we're going to start from this side. This is a cream and green uh, enamelware strainer or colander it's in really great shape believe it or not that little well those two nicks right there are pretty acceptable when it comes to enamel wear and um, cool I paid what did I pay two bucks for it uh, if you find ten pieces of enamel wear probably nine of them will be pots or pans so I picked this up because you don't see too many of these strainers and if you do find these in your description list it as cream and green because that's a hot point for uh, searching search word in the front uh, and this would be circa 1930s again the cream and the green were the popular kitchen colors of that era here's a 1920s lamp it's made of wood it's mahogany uh, I did rewire it with a respectable antique cloth cord reproduction and I kept the old black Bakelite plug the socket was good on it doesn't have a tremendous amount of value but you know me I love old light fixtures I have a section in my shop on old light fixtures and uh, they sell pretty well for me so uh, that again was uh, two bucks and you know as it is I can probably sell it for 15 to 20 there were probably two and they were probably originally dresser lamps back here is another one of these homemade ceramic things uh, I said I was gonna stop buying them you know I really do sell them they sell well for me they're they usually don't sell for a lot of money unless you have the Christmas trees speaking of Christmas trees let's turn that on um, but I bought this and I don't know how well it will show up it has a pearlescent finish to it usually it's sort of a, a flat white or glossy white but this is a pearlescent finish I've not seen this ghost before and he's not signed anywhere on the bottom sometimes we'll get the date sometimes we won't but we do, we do see the mold HM stands for that's right the Holland mold company remember Holland mold and Atlantic mold are the two are two of the biggies uh, this has a hole in the back and holes in his mouth and eyeballs that means it could be wired for electric you could stick a light bulb up in there and he would glow I think that would be really cool but uh, I'll leave that up to whoever decides to buy it no chips no cracks he's in really good shape and just as a ceramic ghost probably made either well from the late 60s mid 60s into the mid 80s somewhere in there I'm probably gonna get 
15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks for that. I was really surprised when I picked this up for 50 cents that these actually sell for eight to $10 online. This one is made by the General Foam Plastics Company of Norfolk, Virginia. And uh, again, as I said, I was not even planning on selling it, but I see that some of these go for 10 bucks online. So great, it's gonna be for sale. Back there is a really neat trash can. I've seen that trash can many times before, but it's usually rusted or dented or scratched. This one is perfect. There's no dents in it. Let's get this bowl off the top. There's no rust in it and, uh, no, and no fading to it. And these pennants, these college pennants go all the way around even the back. So I'm not gonna pull it away from there. Uh, that, let's see. I paid four dollars for that and it'll sell for maybe twenty dollars or so uh, but I have a particular room that doesn't have a trash can and I like it so I might keep it it's from about 1955 or so you know the mid 50s love it love it love it love it love it now I will put this back on top but I'll show it to you first it's an, an orange iridescent not carnival glass but it is a depression glass bowl, and I think it was made by Federal. That's not the Normandy pattern, although it's close. Uh, this orange colored or marigold colored glass was very popular in the third, popular in the 30s. And as you know, uh, Federal made a lot of it. I'm gonna keep it because it, it, even though it's not the Normandy pattern, it looks a lot like it. And so, you know what? Let me show you. All right. Let me set that down. I'll actually show you. I can't believe I am taking you guys into my kitchen cabinets. But I will let you see that up there is all of that Normandy that I got at that estate sale. And this goes perfectly with it as you can see. And I'm not going to pull that down but it's very much the same color. And I don't think they made a big uh, console bowl in, in Normandy. There, by the way, is all of that Nautilus uh, Homer Lachlan stuff that I decided to keep and not break up. All right, you're not gonna see any more of my private. I'm not opening up my closet doors for anyone else. Back to the thrift haul. Uh, sticking with Halloween, I love this. I know it's in horrible condition, but I think this goes all the way back to the 1930s. It's a very delicate cardboard, uh, almost just like heavy paper, uh, child's Halloween mask in the shape of a cat. And we look there, we can see where the clips were that the string would go through. And this is, this is gonna be great for display at Halloween time. I, I love it. Uh, I paid $2 for it, even in the condition that it's in. Would you have bought this for $2? I had to get it. So I don't plan on selling it, because again, its condition is pretty bad, but that's gonna be really neat as a, a Halloween display piece. So we'll strain him right now. This is super cool. Uh, from the 1960s or 50s, look at this like serving tray uh, on this wire. Come on, get out of the way. I know it doesn't show up really well on this black, but it's got little metal it's got a metal rack. All of these come out. There's not a chip or a scratch or a crack in any of this glass. Now none of it's marked. I don't know who made it. I would have to do a lot of research to figure out who it is. Do you guys know? Anybody know who made this? I love this metal uh, rack. Definitely mid-century. And uh, I'm going to try to get maybe... I don't know. I'm going to go... I'm gonna just go crazy and ask like 45 bucks for this. I can always come down later, but it's unique. It's in fantastic condition. And uh, can't you just see me now sauntering out and in my Nehru jacket, setting this down on my kidney shaped coffee table and saying, won't you try my, <laughs> uh, let's see, won't you try my, I don't know, whatever it is I put in there. Okay, let's keep going. Um, <laughs> this is ruby red and it's probably anchor ha hawking. I haven't done my research yet. 
two creamers. They're not the same pattern. This isn't Charm. Uh, it's not... Uh, okay, I'm not even going to try to name some names, but a lot of Ruby Red was made by Anchor Hawking. It was very popular in, in the 50s. Uh, that's definitely a an Anchor Hawking uh, handle there. Interesting shape on that. And again, I need to look these two up, but they're 1950s glass creamers, and I could probably get about five bucks each for them. All right, here is a, this is called barbed wire. It's a Pyrex dish with a divided lid, and you can see the pattern there. That's the piece that I said was ugly. Okay, yes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I'm gonna let someone else behold this as soon as I sell it. You know what I might do? I might take the lid off and sell the lid because you sometimes see these lids being sold for, you know, something like uh, 15 to 20 bucks, just that divided lid. And then this I'll just take to a flea market and sell for like five bucks. Is that unethical to split that lid up from that bottom? I don't know. Hi, would you like to try some three bean salad in my Pyrex barbed wire casserole? Well, I don't think so. Nope, not me. All right. That, by the way, was made in 1958. And from my research, these were only made in 1958. Currently, there are 15 about of them, about 15 of them for sale on eBay. And they don't bring a whole lot. So, I don't know. This back here should sell for about 20 bucks. It's a Pyrex bowl. It's called, well, Dots. And this is the smallest of them. There were four of them. It was a nesting bowl set in different colors. And I don't remember. It was obviously orange and I think maybe green, yellow, blue, you know, primary colors. But this is the little one. If you can find a set of four of them, they sell for about 150 bucks for the four of them all together. Just this one should do about 20 bucks. Oops, that was before I chipped it. No, just kidding, it's not chipped. Don't you love this? I do. Stand up. He is a, oh, he is a really cool, let me back up, oh, let's hold him up. He's a really cool 60s rooster. Real mid-century mod. He's made in Japan, see that? Can you read upside down? Stay on your head. Anyway, he was a dollar, and I love him. He's really tall. What, he's about 12 inches tall? There's no damage to him at all. And uh, he's just super cool from the 1960s. Here's a jadeite candy dish. It's not quite my taste. I do love jadeite, but this is a little busy. Oops. All right. This is a little busy for me, but I know somebody will fall in love with it. You can probably get about 20 bucks for it or so. It is Westmoreland glass, and in the 1960s forward, Westmoreland always put the WG. You see that? Westmoreland glass. It's inside the lid. It's on the bottom, too. So, uh, Jadeite Opalescent Candy Dish, 1960s. And I can probably get, as I said, about 20 bucks for it. This is probably made in Japan. It doesn't say anywhere on it. Um, I don't buy too many of these little cute, cutesy pootsy vases, but look at him. Isn't he cute? I had to, I had to get it. That was a dollar. Again, doesn't say anything on the bottom. I can probably get about 12 bucks for it. He's just really cute. All right, back here are two uh, lamps. And I kind of have buyers, well, I don't know if I should say that or not, but they're okay. Um, but again, I don't know, is that, are they cute or are they creepy? I don't know. Well, the sockets on them are good. I have to rewire them. It is a pair of them. They're in perfect shape. There are no chips, no cracks. These are screaming 1950s. Right? Didn't everybody, does, don't you all remember these from, you, everybody had some great aunt that had these in a bedroom with those awful plastic pink ruffly shades. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, you do. This was on the bottom of one of them and it was, let's see, it was coming off so I took it off. We can see these were made by William F.B. Johnson. 
and you can read about him online. He was big into these lamps. Um, th this set also came in like a baby blue color as, oops, as well as this pink. So I will wire them. Uh, I really don't know what I'll get for them, but I'm probably going to ask like 30 bucks for the pair and we'll see what happens. I need some help from the doll collectors because I am not one and I just don't know. Now I'm getting a 1930s, 1920s, 30s vibe from these, not a 1950s, 60s vibe, but maybe as I said you doll collectors can help me with that. He needs a bath, and I was kidding at the beginning, he's not creepy, he just needs a little bath. Okay, so this little baby doll says... focus made in Japan right above his bum and on his back in Boston in Boston there I mean they really wanted you to know this guy's Japanese it also says made in Japan twice I don't know why they gave him an orange head uh, but I don't know if he came with clothes or what but I I'm feeling he's uh, 1920s era feeling the same sit down Feeling the same thing on this little thing. Um, I guess it's a boy. Let's focus in on him. Uh, ooh, I just realized he's wall-eyed. Why did they paint him uh, like that? Well, one eye looking at you and one eye looking for you. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Okay, little wall-eyed boy. We'll turn him around and you can see he is definitely made in Japan. Uh, all right, uh, these were both 50 cents and uh, they're cute, but do you guys know what these are? Do you toy collectors or doll collectors? I don't know. This is more my speed. This is a uh, wonderful Lionel street lamp. I know it's not showing up. Let me stand up and show it to you better up here. Very realistic. This would be called pre-war. A lot of train collective train pieces are divided up into uh, post-war and pre-war. So this goes back to the uh, 30s or 40s. Uh, we can see it says Lionel underneath, and uh, that one that one should sell for about. I think that one sells for 12 or 15. Um, I paid a couple bucks for that. There's an Anchor Hawking reamer in uh, green depression glass. And somebody said to me, you know, how come you don't ever really talk about uranium or Vaseline? Well, because it's Vaseline and uranium glass, it's not rare. A lot of glass from the 1920s and 30s had a little bit of uranium in it to give it this color. Um, and, you know, in, in my experience, it's not worth really a whole lot more than if it weren't Vaseline glass. I do know some people just collect uranium or Vaseline glass, uh, which is cool, but I just usually don't mention it. Uh, you, if you put a black light on this, it would glow in the dark. I don't have a black light on it, but I can just, you can even just tell there's a certain luminescence about it, even without a black light. You just know it's uranium. Uh, sometimes also Vaseline. But anyway, that should sell for about 12 or 15 bucks. Here is the base to a peach luster, a pink. That's not pink. Here is the base to an Anchor Hawking peach luster punch bowl. Now, if you remember a couple months ago, I bought the punch bowl and all the cups and a base, but I put it away and forgot when I saw this I couldn't remember whether I had purchased a base or not. Well, lo and behold, when I got home, I did have a base, so now I have two. So I will be putting this base up for sale, and somebody who has a punch bowl would love to find the base. Here's a tin back here. I love this. It was a dollar. Uh, it's from the 1930s, maybe the early 40s. There's Kitty Cat playing with the string. And his colonial grand, his colonial mother is sitting there knit, knitting away in her rocking chair. It was very popular to have colonial uh, era figures on things in the 30s, B 
because uh, Mount Vernon had been saved. It was almost going to be demolished or something. And a bunch of um, women's clubs and so forth. You know, I know I'm going to get this wrong, but you can Google it if you're interested. Uh, they did save Mount Vernon and uh, do some restoration to it. But also, the there was an anniversary about Washington. It was either his... Now I know I'm going to get this wrong. But... Uh, an anniversary, I, I think, of his birthday in the 1930s. So uh, you saw a lot of colonial stuff, and this is just an, an example uh, of that. A woman from the 1780s. Anyway, there's a hole in the top, so there is a ball of string in there, and when I bought this, it had this, the ball of string in it. And this tin is in great shape. I think it would appeal to cat collectors and collectors of 1930s era stuff. All right, what am I, what am I? Oh, this, I love this. Now, uh, I bought this for $4. It's probably from the 1950s. I know that's not the right size light bulb. I didn't have one, but can't you just see this with like one of those Edison light bulbs in it, a big one? It's an industrial light fixture. We can see here it was made, it's called Hot Spot. I'm gonna focus. Hot Spot Electric Company, Philadelphia. I love how that decal is still on there. This old cord is in excellent shape. It does not need to be rewired. And this is unusual because it doesn't clip on anything, it just sits there. You know, this is the kind of thing that you would see reproduced at some somewhere like Restoration Hardware. And they would want, you know, $79.99 for it. Um, I haven't decided yet what I'm going to ask for it. Maybe $79.99. I, I don't know. But industrial lighting is really hot. And I think that someone would just flip out over that. All right, so I'll back up again. Uh, that's everything in this thrift haul. I think. Yep, I didn't miss anything. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. And I'm going to be working on some videos. One is going to be Christmas in July, which might not happen until the very end of July, but I'm working on it for you. And also, hopefully in the next week or so, I'll do an instructional video because I've been asked by several people, please show us how you pack dishes and glass and so forth. Uh, so I'm going to do that as well. All right, folks, happy thrifting, happy buying, happy selling. This is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now. Mm -hmm.